At the terminus of the Western Coombe, we come to the Bergschrund, which delineates the start of the Lhotse face, an unrelenting wall of glacial blue ice which gives access to the highest camp on Everest, the South Coal. A serious test in fitness and endurance, it averages 40 to 50 degrees with occasional 80 degree bulges for hours at a time at extreme altitude. The face is punctuated by Camp 3, which can take 5 to 10 hours to reach. To give you an idea, it's about 2,000 vertical up to, up to this camp. Uh, it took us about 5 hours. Uh, sea level usually takes me about an hour to do 3,000 vert. So obviously the air is thin, we're at less than half an atmosphere. The going is very, very slow up here. Our strategy is generally to tag Camp 3 on our second rotation and sleep here on our summit bid to reduce the risk of altitude illness before we are fully acclimated. We just pulled into Camp 3 on the Lhotse face. Absolutely glorious day, a little bit of wind, but reports from the summit are uh, it was pretty good up there today. We're 24,300 feet. It's at 7,300 meters without oxygen. We are absolutely knackered going out, but that's part of the game, right? Join you off in the distance, looking down at the Western Coom Camp 2. You can see our our Camp 3 just perched in the middle of this vertical mile high face. The Sherpas painstakingly dug this camp in. A ton of work at this altitude. And I'll show you the route we'll take tomorrow through the yellow band, up the Geneva Spur, and into the South Call. You can see the plume coming off the summit of Everest right now. If you look closely, you can actually see some climbers just below the, the cell summit. That's your goal over the next couple of days. We get to sip some O's tonight. This is the first place we can put on oxygen. We'll be on oxygen all the way above here. So I'm looking forward to it. We'll get a good little rest, recover here. I'm looking at Joy Yu and Guy Chung Kong. We constantly keep abreast of the weather and conditions as above Camp 3, our summit bid truly begins. It is three to six hours to the South Pole passing through the yellow band, which is a distinct layer of yellow rock which can be a source of bottlenecking, with climbers both ascending and descending. There are now two lines set up, an uphill and a downhill line to help ease that congestion. The next landmark to look out for is the Geneva Spur, a series of rock benches leading to a final steep pitch before the flat traverse into the coal. Rockfall out of the Lhotse cooler can be common between the yellow band and the Geneva Spur. With the steepness, there are no good places to take a break between Camp 3 and the top of the spur, so make sure you're pre-rigged with water and food in your pockets. This may be your first time climbing on oxygen, and there's always going to be a learning curve to get accustomed to climbing with a mask on your face. Arriving into the South Coal is a great achievement, but we need to remain vigilant we are now in the death zone, where the amount of oxygen is insufficient to sustain human life for an extended period of time. This is Mike Hamill reporting live from the death zone, south call, 8,000 meters. We just rolled in. Uh, everyone feels terrible at this point. It was a long, hard day. over here behind me. This is our setup. One of the most miserable places on earth. It's always snowing, always blowing. This is a rare lull that we're getting now, but it's always cold as hell with the lack of oxygen. It makes it even worse. 
The South Coal, sometimes called Camp 4, is the final and last camp on Everest and our staging point for our summit bid.